Hello, and welcome to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast with your host, me, Hal Coleman, uncensored and unplugged. Pay attention, take lots of notes, because you're going to find out exactly how to get more new customers, more referrals, and grow your business. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770-993-0004 or email him hal at halcoleman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the Internet Audio and Video Guy. Since the birth of the Internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales, and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him Mike at InternetAudioGuy.com. Well, hello, this is Hal Coleman, and welcome to yet another episode of the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. I'm here with my friend and mentor and partner in crime, Mike Stewart. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing great. Coming in loud and clear. Where are you today? Well, I'm sitting here on Percy Priest Lake, Nashville, and the temperature has dropped. So uh, looking forward to where this is October of 2018. So looks like fall has really er arrived. Oh, you know, I went out uh, last night after dark. It's probably around 930 last night. Happened to remember that my garbage can was still down by the street. Uh, and I went down there. I had it on a just a, you know, a actually had on kind of a tank top where I'd been working out and I had on a pair of shorts and I was barefooted. I went down to the street and almost froze to death. I said, this is the first time in six months I've been cold. <laughs> it felt, it felt weird. Well, it's uh, been a hot summer, but it, it, it's now, I think it's done. Yeah. Yeah, it is done. And, uh, <clears throat> so glad to have the cool weather coming along. Got, uh, Hunting season's opening up this weekend, and fishing season's coming to a close. So you know me, if I'm not working with clients and or working with you, I'm out there in the woods somewhere or or on the on the water somewhere trying to catch another fish. So Mike, uh, what I want to talk about today is is uh, deals and discounts. When, when to cut a deal with somebody, when to not cut a deal with them, when to offer them a deal, when to not offer them a deal. And I want to tell you a little story. Uh, back a couple of years ago, I had a couple of trees that I had to have taken down. And I called a really good friend of mine, a lifelong friend of mine, uh, who knows uh, a lot of people in the area. And I said, listen, do you know a good tree guy? He said, oh, yeah, yeah. He said, I, I know a good one. Uh so he gave me the name and number of this tree cutting service. He said, if they don't help you, uh, here's another one. He said, these, these guys both do a good job. So I called this tree service and, uh, I said, uh, yeah, I need you to come out and give me an estimate to cut down a couple of trees. So they said, okay. And the guy, they came out, there was two of them and they went around, they looked at my trees and they kind of, you know, evaluated it. Didn't take them but a second. And uh, the guy said, "Well, I tell you what," he said, "It'll be uh, nine hundred dollars to cut the two trees down." He said, "But if you'll agree to do it uh, and let us do it uh, this week, I'll do it for you for five hundred dollars." I said, huh, that's interesting, you know. So I said, well, you know, I'm just getting some estimates. I, I want to think about it. Uh, but uh, it, it just kind of was like a, a slap in the face to me, not a, not a derogatory slap in the face, but an, an unexpected slap in the face because I would have paid whatever they asked for. They came highly recommended. The guy said they do good work, and if the guy said, 
uh, yeah, it'll be $900. I said, well, uh, you know, let's go ahead and take them down. But when he said, it'll be $900, but I'll do it for $500. Just, you know, being a marketing guy and a sales guy like I am, the, my mind just went into a tailspin. Like, why would they do this? What's going on with these people that will make them quote me a price and then instantly cut the price in half? And you know what? Uh, I ended up not using those guys uh, for some other reasons because I called them. Uh, I, I called them a couple of days later to really to give them the go ahead on it, and they didn't even have my estimate. They didn't even remember who I was. And the guy was in a bar. You could hear the loud music, and he asked me if I would send him my estimate over so he could use it to do my job, which kind of ticked me off. But I did it, and then. Uh, they, I said, I can do it any day except Mondays. Can't do it on Mondays. Any day except Mondays. They showed up on Monday morning. So I said, nah, you know, get out of here. Get out of here. But why, why would they have cut their price? I, was, I would have never questioned their price, nor their service. I would have just given them the go-ahead. Uh, so I'm a big believer in deals and deadlines. Deals and deadlines. But in your marketing and advertising. Uh, but there's a place for that. And there's a place to just quote your price and shut up. You know, when I had my pest control business, Mike, in the, the latter years of my business, I had it for 18 years. Uh, and, and for the last 10 of those 18 years, I was the most expensive pest control company in the Atlanta area. I was more expensive than Orkin or Terminex or anybody. Uh, I just found out that I could keep raising my price. And as long as I delivered an, an experience to people and gave them great service and a great experience, they didn't mind paying it. Uh, and I didn't, if somebody said, you know, <clears throat> I, uh, that, that $500 is probably a good deal. I just can't afford it. I'm on a tight budget. I can't afford $500. Uh, and I, I had another company that, you know, they'll do it for $450 and $50 is a lot of money to me. Could you match that price? If you can do it for $450, I'll, I'll go with you. I'd have probably said, sure, you know, okay. If, if, if I want to help you out here, but there needs to be a reason why you cut your price or offer a discount. You don't just walk up to somebody and say, well, my price is $1,000, but I'll do it for you for $500. That makes no sense. And you lose a lot of sales. And then you get the reputation of, well, I guess they were going to rip me off at $900 for that tree because it was only worth, it was only a $500 job. So Tell us how that works in, in your world of Internet marketing. I know it's the same thing. Uh, well, you know, my first impression of this is is that when somebody would do that unprovoked or un, unchallenged, it seems like that there was something else going on, uh, problems in the business, maybe uh, uh, urgency for cash, cash flow down, you know, the, there's something going on they didn't share with you that they wanted to establish that this is a $900 job, but they needed the money so bad they'd be willing to take almost half. And, you know, or, you know, there are some mindsets which I don't totally agree with. I used to see this in Internet marketing, you know, establish a value, whether it's believable or not, of one price and say, but today only. You know, and they used to call that um, um, not urgency, but uh, scarcity. In other words, uh, if you don't buy it today at this lower price, that that price will be gone tomorrow. And that's that's a strategy that I do see in internet. You know, scarcity marketing. Um, and, and, and let me, and let me, if I can, that's okay as long as you make that price go away tomorrow. Right, right. But you've the, got the, to you've got to be credible. And be believable. So if, if you know, putting on a sale today, well, it's you a know, great thing as long as you say if you say this is good until midnight tonight. But then if you're offering it the next day, 
you lose your credibility. Right. Well, you got to create you got to create your credibility and then of course nobody want nobody wants to openly admit. Look, I've had some rough times. I've had a slow summer and I normally if 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 I was in a a, a little bit more of a control of my business decision making period right now i wouldn't do this job for less than 900 dollars, but i need some cash flow so you're in luck i mean may, maybe honesty i don't know what you think about that but the thing is is because they just said hey this is my price but i'm going to do it for half the price it makes you suspect and if it goes back to what we talked about no like and trust my trust level went way down and so you really need to be uh, have integrity with your deals um you need to you need to prove value. I used to have a, a colleague named Chuck Reeves, and he used to say yeah, it, Chuck. he used to say your price is never too high. Nobody in the history of of the world said your price was too high in minute. It was a slogan of his. And what he means once you per, once you prove value, and and the, the you know proving value controls price um a good a good friend of mine who was a copywriter said what is the value of water in the mindset of most people you know you just tell me what do you think a glass of water should cost How? well it, dep- it depends on whether uh i'm standing in front of a water cooler or if i'm out on the middle of the desert for three days right right the value goes up depending on the situation so the thing is, is, is that you can, if you can prove value by framing the situation, uh, is the technique to make a deal. And, and so, you know, if, if you can prove the value is X and you're willing and can be profitable at giving a deal because your motivation is, is, you know, uh, it, we wanted to have a the best October ever, so we're we're willing to do an October only sale. And if you book it now and do it before the end of the month, you're going to benefit from our motivation to have a record October. And if you wait till November, that deal is gone. I don't see a problem with that. But just not establishing value means I don't believe it's a deal. If you can't establish the value then you can't give a deal. And and once again, um, if you can walk away from the deal because you know you have value, knowing that if this person won't take it at this price, there'll be somebody else, and you're in a position to where you don't have to t- you know cut your price. You know, the, the, the reasons people have to make deals is they have a motivation that is beneficial to them. You know, why does Walmart put stuff on sale? Is because they want to move inventory. Why do they slash prices at any business? Is because they need to move inventory, they need cash flow. Whatever the reason, that's not really a, uh, they're trying to give a benefit to the customer based on the fact that uh, they have a motivation themselves. But if you just do it without proving value, I think that it becomes suspect and the trust level goes down and you're going to lose. Just like in your case of your story, they, that those people handled it wrong, proved that there were problems with them. I mean, you know, my goodness, they, they, they weren't professional. They didn't show up on time. And when you called them, you could hear they were in a bar. You know, uh, man, where did your trust level go then? It just went out the window. And, maybe uh, I should maybe I shouldn't have called them at two o'clock in the morning. Well, that's you know, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you know, you know, yeah, here's the deal. Let's if we can do it now, I, I, I would have been ready to do it now. But the cutting the price before I even ask about it confused me, and it, it and it made me back off a little bit. So, well, anyway. you know, really think it through. And you know, I mean, I've actually heard heard people over the years say, "I don't ever do sales." Well, you know. If you can have a profitable business and never do a sale, good for you. There's no rules that say you have to, but you know what? Things change. Cash flow f- goes up and down. Uh, you have needs. You want to buy a new piece of equipment. There, there's things that you go, man, if I can raise some cash and do this, I think in the long term I'm going to go to the next level. So uh, c- circumstances and situations change, and you know, a sale and a deal is a way to
to hopefully increase your business and your cash flow. And if that's your goal, just be have integrity and prove value. You know, I, there was a lady, Mike, several years ago uh, that I met through the Chamber of Commerce uh, networking there, and she was a, a, uh, a hypnotherapist. And we talked a little bit one day, and she said, are, are you in, do you ever do joint ventures? And I said, well, sometimes, yeah. And she, she wanted to talk to me about, uh, because her, she had a, audio CDs and DVDs of hypnotherapy. She had little sets of them, you know, one for weight loss, one to quit smoking, one for anger issues, one for better sleep. And she said, you know, this stuff would fit right along with what you do. And, and I, and I said, I tell you what, I got to go right now, but let, let me meet you. I, I'd like to buy you a cup of coffee and talk more about this. I got really excited about it. So we met at Starbucks one morning to talk about, you know, she said, well, you sell my things to your customers. And I was thinking, yeah, this might be pretty good. And I said, well, look, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, why don't you just, you know, give me a, uh, you know, copy, give me a, a set of your CDs there and let me go home and listen to them so that I know what I'm talking about. And she just looked at me indignant. She said, uh, well, I don't give my products away. And I, I didn't know what to say. I was frozen. I didn't know what to say. You want me to go sell these things for you, but you don't want you won't give me one so that I can familiarize myself with it and learn what it is that I'm selling. And I said, "Well, if you want me to sell them? Don't you want to give me?" It? She said, no, I, I don't give them away. I'll sell them to you. And I'm like, uh. <clears throat> excuse me, I think my wife just called me. I'll check with you later. You know, that was my attitude. Get me out of here. I'm, a, I'm in front of a fool. Uh, there's a time when you need to discount. There's a time when you need to give something away, but uh, do a freebie. There are times for those things. But anyway, uh, not right up front. So anyway, Mike, uh, well, I think this is uh, – we can wrap this one up. Uh, I don't have a lot more to say, but unless you do. Well, you know what? On the note of giving something away, why don't you call me or Hal and let us give you a little bit of our time to help you with your marketing and help you with uh, review your website and talk about how we could make a difference in your business. You know, most of the successful people that I've ever had the pleasure of interviewing all had a coach or a trainer, or a mentor to hold them accountable. And uh, how how can somebody get in touch with you if they wanted to have a free hour with you? Free one hour, double your business coaching session. Uh, you can call me at 770-993-0004, or you can email me at hal at halcoleman.com. And if you go to pestcontrolmarketer.com, you'll find all my, my uh, contact information there. But I offer anybody a free one-hour uh, strategy session uh, just to introduce myself to you, to find out more about your business, and give you some great, great takeaway information that you can go out and start using the next day uh, to help create that faster-growing, thriving business, and there's no charge or no obligation at all. So give me a call. A lot of people do, and they go away very happy with that hour. How and can I can get in touch with you, Mike. Well, they can get in touch with me, but the first thing I'd want them to do is I got a free giveaway that I that if you'll dial this phone number, uh, it will send you a link right to your cell phone of a free uh, set of steps that you need to really make sure that you're doing with your business, and also a little bit more about me, and a free course on video blogging. Worth uh, has a value, a uh, real value of fifty dollars. So all you got to do is call six one five two zero six four three nine three. That's right, just call six one five two zero six four three nine three, and the, listen to the phone, uh, and I'll answer the phone. In fact, I'll dial it right here in front of you to let you hear what you hear, so that you know you got the right call. Thanks for calling websites, you can troll SMS text message free giveaway. Check your text messages for a link to my course, Instant Video Blogger. So anyway, there you go. 
It there just, you go. It, you can dial that number. I'll give it to you one more time, 615-206-4393. It'll give you a free course, uh, some uh, a little bit of history of what I do and how I do it differently. And uh, more importantly, um, you know, you can uh, also give you my direct cell phone number if you want to have any questions. You know, Hal and I are here to help you, and a percentage of the folks that uh, have uh, uh, taken us up on this offer have never regretted it, never looked back. Um, we've got case studies of people that have taken their business to the next level, and uh, we'd love to do that for you. So, now, Wait a minute. Let me clarify that, what you just said. It confused me a little bit. A percentage of the people that have called us and taken advantage of it, never regret it. I would say just a percentage of the people that hear this message call us, but the ones that do call us, I know of nobody that's ever regretted it. Well, 100% they don't regret it. You know, you're clarifying what I was trying to say. So I may, I may, uh, uh, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll let it this part (laughs) out. (laughs) I've been clarifying what you've been trying to say for 35 years, Mike. Well, And you've been doing the same with me. Well, you're the clarifier. There we go. There we go. We'll see you next time. That'll be a program. I'll talk to you later, Mike. Thanks for listening to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes and on your phones and in Stitcher on your Android. But more importantly, go to our website, pestcontrolmarketingpodcast.com. Subscribe to our email list to always be notified of new episodes. You're never going to want to miss what we've got coming up next, and you never know what we're going to be able to do to help you with your pest control marketing.